Hello, we are going live this afternoon with Dr. Rachel Greenberg, trauma-informed clinical psychologist, and I'm going to invite her now. And today we're up. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. All right. So I'm so excited to have you on and talk about all things self-trust and dating. I'm just repositioning this camera here. <laughs> so before we dive into this juicy topic and important topic, I would love if you could just share a little bit about your work and why you got into doing this work. Sure. Well, it's good to see you. <laughs> Likewise. Um, well, I'm a clinical psychologist and increasingly over the course of my studies and my, you know, have really passionate about relationship mm -hmm. and that that's been strongly influenced by the discord and the tumult that I myself was confused by being at the heart of <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, 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 so, and that's kind of a, a weird way to say I was having a lot of relationship issues romantically specifically, which I think is the portal that opens us to our deepest wounds. And so, although I was steeped already in psychology and my training pursuits and things like this, I didn't really learn what my true gifts were almost in this vein until I started to see the ways that my unconscious trauma was perpetuating these problems in my relationships that didn't feel true to who I was. And so that kind of opened the door for me um, to a lot and, and, and kind of positions me now um, having healed very much um, yeah. to be able to teach this and to know it personally, and to be inspired by what we're capable of when we connect in a conscious way. So now it's just like, it's like who I am. It's all I want to do and learn about and preach on. So yes, and we are so excited to have you on the Hong Kong team and collaborating with us as well. This is a new news update, but Dr. Rachel will be doing a whole host of things with Hum Hum from IG Lives, discussion groups, facilitating, um, working with individuals. So lots of um, exciting opportunities for you to share your gifts with this community. And yeah, I think we're very much aligned on how important it is to, or the importance of the role of relationship in one's life to have conscious relationships really can open the door for so much healing growth and um, just expression of, of mm -hmm. self in this world. So mm -hmm. on that note, um, today we're going to be focusing on self-trust, which is definitely something with which many of us struggle with, especially when it comes to dating. So maybe just starting with like what it is, how do you define self-trust? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I mean, it might feel differently to each person, but I think in, in some way for me, it feels like a, a deep confidence in our ability to take care of ourselves in the relational space, yeah. that it's like an allyship, but it's a belief in our character, in our worth, in our awareness of who we are, what we need, what we deserve, what we'll assert that we can like rely on and feel safe in when we approach others, mm -hmm. especially in the romantic sphere. Mm -hmm. I love how you mentioned kind of this allyship with the self. Like mm -hmm. so much of it is like, do I have my own back? Can I count on myself to have my own back? Because oftentimes like we'll get in these pickles of self-betrayal and that's actually what feels bad. It's not really the circumstance with other person. It's like where we didn't, self-honor in that circumstance right right yeah and yeah. why do you think that 
it's, it's important, especially as it pertains to dating and then in relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking as you're asking, like, I wonder what your sense of it is, is when it comes to the hum hum participants and how it shows up for them in this mm -hmm. space. Cause yeah, I, it, I imagine it kind of has a different flair in, in the hum hum world, the way that the dates are navigated and the experiences are held. Um, I lost track of your question. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the question was just on the importance of it, like where you see, why do you see it as a critical aspect of, in, within dating and relationships? Self -trust. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll talk about hum hum. <laughs> okay, yeah. To, you know, I think it's the foundation of the health of the connection that is established. Like if, cause if we're coming from a self abandoning place, mm. the vitality of the connection is inherently skewed from the beginning then. And it probably will only get worse, <laughs> you know, like it'll reach an unfortunate head. So I think if we want relational health, which we all do, and if we want deep connection, which we all do, really, we have to be connected to ourselves. We have to trust ourselves first and foremost to show up in ways that, um, you know, number one, will like be the magnet for that which we desire. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and, then to, and then to open, I think there's an opening here too. Like we have to trust ourselves enough to trust that we're going to choose someone we can trust and open mm. to and be safe with and then like really do the thing mm -hmm. you know yeah and I think you know when it comes to dating because it involves the heart in a big way I mean as do all relationships some of that trust is like how knowing how to take care of ourselves amid the emotional twists and turns and ups and downs of engaging the heart in relationship. So mm -hmm. yes, it's vulnerable. Like we can't deny the fact that when you are opening your heart to connection, which is required for true intimacy, right. it's vulnerable and it can be extremely painful. So like the, the trust aspect is like, do I have my own back to pause, to self care, to, you know, acknowledge when I'm uncertain or don't know to acknowledge when I'm really, you know, excited and want to move forward, but like feeling, you know, all the feelings that we might have, like, I, I see the self-trust piece as just baseline. Like if we don't have that, mm. everything becomes 10 X scarier too, because mm -hmm. then we're actually like giving our power over to the circumstance or the connection rather than like, I've got me no matter where this goes and I'm still going to show up fully to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. You, you said it so pointedly. So like from a, from a clinical perspective or a trauma informed perspective or any perspective that you want to offer here, yeah. why do you think we struggle with this? Why do we struggle with self-trust? Yeah. The way I view this is from a developmental perspective. So I really believe that the origins, I mean, the truth is that we have organic um, original attachment um, needs that started when we were little, little, even in utero, like, you know, that this stuff goes back so deep and long and that a lot of us, when we were little and like really the, the basic necessities to survive came from our, our attachment to our caretakers and the extent to which they were there mm -hmm. in all of the ways. You know, I think a lot of people struggle to see their own trauma historically because their physical needs were met like they had a place to live they had they went to school their parents bought them clothes and they had f food if they were privileged enough to have that level of material physical support it can be hard for a lot of people to look at the ways in which they might have been emotionally starved or um mm -hmm. deprived of attention or you know uh, support encouragement attunement so these 
I view the, you know, the spectrum of trauma that happens for us as children to be profoundly and centrally influential in what comes up for us as we relate in our adult romantic relationships because the same attachment needs are showing up in these intimate connections we build with each other as adults. And if we haven't been conscious yet of the need to heal what hurt us then, we, the psyche, it's like not conscious, it's an amazing kind of mechanism. Um, the psyche seeks to heal the original wounds through romantic partnership. And um, so it's kind of getting into the weeds a little bit more of the theory, but I think it's hard for many to trust ourselves because of how we were raised. And mm -hmm. also, and I don't mean to, I, I think it's really important to name the, the systemic realities that contribute to um, disconnect from self or the need to abandon oneself to survive depending mm -hmm. on sociocultural positioning and race, gender, like all of the things. Um, so in some ways, I hope that that allows people to get some space from it being, it's not our fault, mm -hmm. um, but, and, you know, it's, it's our privilege to be able to see like, wow, this is shit that I'm carrying and, and I'm perpetuating it because I don't trust myself and I deserve to trust myself and I can. And mm -hmm. so I'm gonna do what it takes to, to heal whatever's kept me from that. Mm -hmm. And usually mm -hmm. in my lens, that's old stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so going to, you know, I guess one of the things that's coming to mind as you're sharing is like, I, it's almost like you can either lose or gain self-trust every time there's hurt or pain, depending on how you showed mm -hmm. up for yourself right like pain doesn't have to mean like oh I, I failed and therefore I can't trust myself it could be like a good pain because you're making a choice to you know in integrity but then it still hurts like right. maybe can you talk a little bit about like just navigating emotions as it comes to this topic and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I think it's so beautiful what you just said and I think it speaks to also what you were alluding to around like it, it ultimately doesn't matter what, like the detachment from the outcome or the need for the other person to respond a certain way is where we are truly free and sovereign. And it doesn't mm -hmm. mean we're not impacted. Yeah, right. But it means that we're, we have developed such intimacy with ourselves that we trust ourselves to be there for us with what to hold, whatever we feel, whatever comes up, whatever story we have that like, and in the work I do, it's like, and you probably know this very well through your practices, but like, you know, it's kind of like the loving observer vibe or like mm -hmm. the, the, the true part of us, the self leader part of us that can hold us, us ourselves through anything. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. will and does, and that we, and these parts of us that get triggered or hurt or whatever, the feelings we have can rely on that. Yeah, and right. That. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it's almost like the act of how we show up to relate to the parts of us that are in pain in essence some kind of reparenting and and we are the trust comes from holding ourselves kindly even when we screw up even when we get it wrong even when we fail or fall down like that warmth and like care and not abandoning self when it doesn't go how we want right Crucial. Is, is a part of the trust. So what are some ways that we can intentionally practice cultivating self-trust? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I like to tell people to start with where they don't sense it's there. Like, mm. you know, because I, I, I think it can, it can be easier in some ways to look at like, the triggers or the places that it feels like you don't have that so that right. we can delve into it deeper to look at why that is. 
And then, you know, I teach, so I, yeah, I always start with like, let's be conscious of the patterns or the triggers or where do you notice this isn't something you feel like you have. Um, and let's be compassionate and curious with what that is. And then, you know, I think it's a choice. It's a choice that we make to, to show up a certain way mm -hmm. um, and to cultivate the skills within ourselves to, um, to be there. And I think, and I'll just say, you know, I think along these lines, it really feels to me like it's about developing self-intimacy first. And so I think we learn to trust ourselves through how deeply we're willing to listen to what's here and what we need and then how in choice we are around whatever skill building or risk taking or behavioral changes need to happen so that yeah. we begin meeting those needs reliably. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So being able to recognize the patterns and tendencies and then also check in with the self listen deeply and be able to then respond to those and take action in alignment with those and so as we're working to identify within self like you know what it is that we need or what we want what might it look like mm -hmm. um thought wise behavior wise to like cultivate versus kind of like destroy self-trust like how can you give us like tangible um manifestations of like each of those things so we can recognize how that could feel within ourselves yeah sure i mean i think as a you know one thing and this was for me for a long time i think what i want to emphasize is that if and many of us did. So, um, you know, if you grew up, if someone grew up and they didn't have functional relating modeled to them or that it wasn't felt for them, that they're going to approach themselves and their relationship life from this kind of distorted sense of what it feels like, which will be mm. familiar to them, even if it's not good. Mm -hmm. And so I often encourage people to like, the radar here is how do you feel? Like, how do you feel after you connect with someone? How do you feel after you had a, that date? And can, how do you feel when you're in connection? Are you in your body? Do you feel present? Do you feel warm? Do you feel seen, uplifted, enriched, nourished? Like these are qualities that authentic, conscious, healthy, safe relationships offer. That's not to say that there aren't conflicts, that there isn't creative tension that comes up that you work with, but there's like a general safety that mm -hmm. you feel with the other person. So if you're not feeling that, then that is an indication likely that you're not, that there isn't self-trust, believe it or not, because that means that there's, you're engaging, you're choosing still to engage in a relationship with someone that doesn't feel good to you, that isn't feeding you, that doesn't meet you. Mm -hmm. And that's not wrong. It's interesting. And it's information for you to begin to explore deeper what's happening here for you. And is there a place in you that doesn't trust you to take care of yourself in the relational field if you're staying engaged with in relationships or dating patterns where you aren't lit up. Yeah. Well, this is interesting because it now raises the question for me of like, you mentioned earlier about how we almost seek out the familiar as a way of like feeling safe, but that familiar might not be good for us Yeah. or in our highest good or, you know, serving where we want to go or aspirational relationship. Right. But let's say you are in a healthy relationship at large and you are, um, it's unfamiliar because there's a lot of newness. Right. And then like as humans, we do this fun self-sabotaging thing where we are like, oh, this is freaking me out. It's unfamiliar. It must be bad. Mm -hmm. So therefore mm -hmm. like not mm -hmm. being able to even receive the right. good feelings that you're talking about, like how do you know when that's happening? Right. 
and that will happen and it happens all the time and it and what will happen i see too is that there will be like this projection these parts of us that get scared around what it means to enter unknown territory come in to see yeah to keep us in what they know even if we have a stronger idea about what's best for us and so that can that shows up a lot like projection of of the old narrative or just and and the protective anticipation of like it's always been this way for me i i can't open myself enough to entertain that it would be different and that is a new edge of practice so i would say if you're there let's celebrate you know that means you you're there and so now it's just about letting yourself open to it and i think that's an intention and that's an exploration constantly or as much as it comes up around like where are you projecting mm -hmm. your past what would it be like to love without your history what and if you trust your and again it's like if you trust yourself to be with someone that you can trust or to approach the dating space in ways that you can trust call it a, you know then it's like there's <laughs> that's it then you're just your heart can be open and and i think you practice you yeah. practice receiving being seen you practice opening your heart when it closes you notice that and you love yourself through that you know i love how you call it the edge of practice because i think so much of relating is that so much of relating is like meeting us on this cutting edge of what's uncertain and new and yet like aspirational and real time. And I think that like one of the lessons that always like when it, when I remember it, it brings me like deep peace is that mm -hmm. everything's changing all the time. And so mm -hmm. like, just because one interaction was like one way, one moment, if you leave the space for it to be different and do the things for yourself, within self, because that's all we can control for it to be different. It might be different. And so it's almost like surprising when that happens. And it's like, oh, like, you're not now stuck in the pattern, you're able to kind of like, move through it, because mm -hmm. of, because things change all the time. But it's like, mm -hmm. but that is the edge, right? It's like, we have to be right there with it in order to even acknowledge that it could be different. Right. So I guess any other um, ways that we can recognize when we're like on goal or off goal when it comes to this, when it comes to self-honoring. Um, so we've got feelings, right? That's a big one. Right. Yeah. What, el what else can we trust within ourselves? I think it's, it's, it's you know, what's the quality of your dating life? What's the quality of the relationships you're in? And, and, and this stuff comes up across the board. Romantic, I think it's the most fertile because this, as I, you know, there's so much more there for us and it's the intimacy is probably some of the deepest though. Um, it, yeah, look at your friendships, look at how you relate to your colleagues and your coworkers, your neighbors, the people, the random people. I mean, like it, it's, you know, um, you'll see data points yeah. in, in the quality of your relationships and how, so how you feel in them. And then also like, are you met by the people that, do you feel like your needs are being met? Are you happy in the connections that you've cultivated? Do you feel like you have enough of them? Um, yeah, and and yeah, I think I, I talk, I think this is important and I don't mean to, um, because this will look different for each of us. But I think there's like, a, for me, maybe I'll speak for myself. I mean, I encourage those who do this work to look at it for themselves too. So, but there, there's like a caliber of person that when we trust ourselves to connect to that mm. kind of person, there's like, I guess it's like a raising the standard. So where are your standards around like, what do you expect relationships are? Mm you know, and what are you accepting that they are that 
isn't actually true to what you want. I think this is a fantastic point that we don't have to be in romantic partnership or even dating to practice this and get a sense of how are we doing in this relational field of our lives. Like all of our relationships pose opportunities for us to like check in with, with this and, and work on this. I think that's a really important point that we don't have to wait for romance. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, even in friendships or collaborations, you know, where are, where do you feel out of alignment is, are you not speaking your full truth? Like what are some other like reflection questions maybe we can offer people to like check Mm -hmm. in, do a pulse check with their Mm -hmm. different relationships? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, one big question is like, am I satisfied relationally? Mm. Um, do I feel fulfilled by the relationships that are in my life? Or do I feel like I need, you know, I think a lot of people, especially if you're on this path, it, what I see happen often is that for me, this was true. And it's still an edge of, I mean, it's, it's getting, you know, it's gotten so much richer and I feel more held than ever, but Mm. for so long, I was like awakening and I was healing and I was like, outgrowing my life because I wasn't who I was anymore. And that meant the relationships that I had long held. Yeah. And so it can be isolating. I think that that's kind of a natural part of this process for those who are doing this work in the way I'm describing. So to number one, just normalize that. And then, and then though, I think, so I think a lot of people are feel alone and are lonely and don't have to be. And so part of it might be like, what do I, and I think this is really important, especially before you even start to pursue romance is that because I think when people feel lonely, they think I need a partner. Yeah. Instead of this loneliness is an indication that like, I need friends, I need colleagues, I need Sangha, I need Mm. teachers, I need mentors, I need elders, I need community. Yes. So I would say, look at that for yourself, where, what do you, and what do you desire? Yeah. And also like maybe reflecting on what nourishes you within the relationships that you do enjoy the most or do find the most satisfying. Like what are the nourishing factors and like what nourishes you period? Like, I think this is such a big question because I think loneliness on one hand has to do with connection but I think such a big piece of it is around our connection to ourselves and our capacity to nourish ourselves and so sometimes that might manifest in a relational way and in connection but sometimes it's just like what do you need right now like what do you actually need and I think being able to give that to ourselves then invites others to give that to us as well yeah, maybe uh, this is an interesting like way to take this, but like the role that connection plays in nourishment, like maybe we can just talk more broadly mm-hmm. about connection and like the, the role that it plays mm-hmm. in, in our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe it's central to our being. Mm-hmm. So I believe that it is nourishment. It is food. Yeah. It is. And, and that when we don't have it, we are deprived. We are starved because mm-hmm. we are in true existential need. Yeah. 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 We were actually, um, we had a philosopher on one of our most recent events and um, she did this awesome talk on the different types of friendship and the distinctions between like romantic and just kinship and we didn't touch on like even familial bonds, but just the different types of connection. And if we were, you know, in the discussion, we were like, it, it was interesting because we we're like, there really is very, if there can't draw hard lines between these different forms of relationship. And I think even more nowadays, like there's just um, a blending of like the roles that people play. But I think this one 
thing that I think of when I think of like a healthy relationship is that like our selves are mirrored back to us in a way that elevates us. So whether we are on our worst behavior or on our best behavior, a true good friend or companion or ally, like whether they on purpose hold that mirror up or just their essence and their being and who they are helps us to reflect on like, oh, this is how I want to be or this is how I'm being. Right. Like it gives us that opportunity to be more of ourselves and and evolve. What do you think? I, I'm 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 eating up what you're saying. It's so true. And 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 I appreciate what you're saying too, because it's that this type of connection is also honest, that you're describing something that allows us to see ourselves clearly in a safe, deeply nourishing, connected way, yeah. which I think is foreign to a lot of people, especially those who are who, who like confrontation was truly dangerous for. Mm. But but what you're describing it, it it is it's soul food. It's like when we can see each other and and call each other to rise. Mm. Mm -hmm. That it fe it's invigorating. Yeah, it's yeah. like I know you can do better, and I'm only telling you because I care and I like love you. And I think that that's like, and sometimes it might not look like that. Like sometimes it's just like you know how you engage. But you know, right. the other day I had. A funny situation with um I was sharing a, a sticky situation I was in with my partner and it was really helpful because initially my partner was like you know jumped on board and was like with me in my emotions like that's bullshit da, da, da. and then but like when we really got into it like I also could count on them to be like maybe just pause and like don't, you know don't do anything just yet like I'm like yeah that's right that's right we're just gonna chill here <laughs> and like it All was right. good to kind of be met in both like the full fury of my emotional space and my capacity to like not act from that place and I think like feeling that really dynamic mirroring was so rich and it, I felt just like really grateful for that level of um kind of dancing with me in my experience, but also trusting me to like, do better, <laughs> you right, know, right. but not feeling judged at all for right. my, where I was in the rawness of my emotional process. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and what I would say about that is, first of all, your partner is very skilled. So yeah. <laughs> beautiful, and you deserve it. And you have it because so are you. Yeah. 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 That is the gift of, I guess, <laughs> yeah, of authentic relating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the self-trust piece that like, because if you didn't in some way do what you just said they do for you, mm. for yourself, as part of your practice, they wouldn't, you wouldn't vibe there. You wouldn't mm -hmm. expect them to meet you in those deeply rich ways. You know, and so, yeah, just to kind of bring it back to that, you're right. I think you said it's like this mirror, um, but it speaks to your, pra your inner practice first and foremost. And then it's beautiful. Of course, they can meet you there. Yeah, thank you. And, and one of the things that we were, that I acknowledged or just like really appreciated was sometimes I'll first jump over the raw emotions because I'm like, no, shouldn't be there. This isn't good. I should not be real. Like, I shouldn't even have these feelings. Mm -hmm. But I think because I felt safe in the container that I was able to like give those more space, knowing that I would ultimately get to where I need to go. And I think like that you're right. That is like the self-trust piece, like trusting, okay, I'm eventually going to get to a place where there's clarity, where there's equanimity, where there's non-reactivity, all those things. But like right now, I'm not there and that's right. okay. But yeah. I think because I had the container and the mirror, mm -hmm. I actually was able to access more of my raw emotions than I normally would do on my own, which is like, mm -hmm. well, maybe I'll journal about these. Like, oh, that doesn't feel so good. But like, hurry up, let's get to this other place because I don't like how this is. Right. So yeah, having that alliance was just like a really powerful experience. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Yummy. That's great. Yeah, I yeah. love that. 
Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, uh, in terms of the hum hum date, you know, mm. like I'm noticing like ha even, even that, like there's even what you described, which is a kind of advanced closeness with your partner and your ability to feel safe together. And, and hum hum, in that space, there's still that, there's the same invitation in some mm. way, you know? Yeah. 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 I think it, exactly. If we can appreciate and like acknowledge our humanity within a safe container with each other, then we can access our, let's call it like superhumanity or our, you know, how our aspirational expression of self and like, it's true. You don't, yes, it, it helps to have deep trust with a person that you've cultivated. And I think if you have that deep trust within yourself too, then like more people can come in to like offer that and like fill that role. And you, like you're saying, like you have ultimately richer relationships across the board, like your whole relationship game is leveled up. Right. Right. Yeah. And just to say it might start with, um, you know, just that first date with someone like that mm. is a powerful space, especially to practice, like, which by the way, this all is that anyway. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes it fun and, and beautiful. And, but yeah, like on that first date, you get to just, it's really, in many ways, it's really, I think it's probably more about you and you than it might ever be at any other point. I don't know if that's true, but because, because there is no established connection yet with the other person, mm -hmm. it's actually a wonderful space to practice what, how to trust yourself through what's coming up and, and give and stay open or not and notice what that's like you know mm. mm -hmm. yeah that's really very true and I wow like if that were you know hum hum's expression of what I could offer people I, I hope that's what's happening right <laughs> that sounds that's exactly <laughs> it <laughs> no so I guess is there anything else you feel called to bring into this on this topic I'm nearing our time we've got about like five six minutes wow time flew um i think you know i just i, I mean anybody in the hum hum community i just applaud and celebrate um for showing you know for for coming to a safe space to explore connection and just to reiterate that you deserve it and that if if you struggle to trust yourself through the dating process or through being in relationship, that's okay. Yes. It's, it's important information that is opening you to do what you need to cultivate it. And that that's possible with intention and practice and some new skills and some space mm -hmm. to listen deeply. You know, it's kind of simple when we distill it. Yeah. yeah, I think I love that of just like meeting yourself wherever you are. If you are, you know, ner like nervous or not trusting of yourself, like that's also okay. And it's a great place to just start. And everything is truly like this nonlinear path and practice. So even if one day you're like, oh, I don't trust myself today. Like this is not a good day that could change tomorrow. That could change in an hour because you're constantly changing. And so it's like, right. I think I always just caution people to, to not blanket label themselves in any fashion because you're so dynamic and, you know, it just creates so much more space for you to rise into that, at, like how you want to show up with the aspired self. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> juicy topic. So um, let's see, do you want to share anything on like your offerings that you, anything you have coming up, workshops, courses, one-on-ones, all that fun stuff? 
Sure. Yeah. For anyone interested, so actually next Saturday, I'm doing a live class on conscious relationships and communication. So it's amazing. It'll be a deeper dive on all of this. And, um, and I, yeah, so if anyone wants to come, they can check out the link in my bio. Um, I am starting enrollment for my six month immersion called Healing Back to Wholeness, which mm. will start in February. Um, my link isn't up live for that, but if people are interested and they want to apply, they can DM me. I'm at Hey Dr. Rachel. I will tag and, you in this post. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and similarly, I've limited spots for private immersions, but if people are interested in that, I'd be happy to connect with anyone who feels called to work with me in that way, too. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, so much good stuff coming up, and thank you for all the work you do in this area and with us, and it was a really, um, it was a joy to get to exchange and connect with you. You too. Yeah, yeah. so much rich wisdom that I mean I'm not surprised by because it just permeates through Hung Hung's um, presence and platform so thank you you know I'm like a super fan and I'm <laughs> so excited to be connected likewise likewise yeah so grateful so everyone check out Dr. Rachel and I will be posting this on our IGTV and um and we'll see you next time okay see you All soon right. bye Bye.